Behind me is Willie Lott's cottage, and in front, Flatford Mill. Constable's father owned Flatford Mill, and so when Constable was a boy, he spent many, many hours playing and fishing around this area. Of course, he did many sketches and paintings all around the Flatford area. And in fact, I'm actually standing on the site of one of Constable's most famous paintings, the Haywain. It's probably the most well-known painting in this country, but it suffers from so many reproductions which are not faithful to the original. But there is so much to admire, and every time I look at it, I see something new. Look at the person fishing near the boat on the right, and way in the distance, again on the right, you can see the hunch figures of mowers in the hayfield. But on the left of the picture is Willie Lott's house, and that's what I want to paint now. Willie Lott was a farmer, and he lived here for over 80 years without even moving from the place for more than four days. In fact, when he died, John, uh, John Constable's brother decided to buy the property to keep it in the mill complex, but unfortunately it was too expensive. Anyway, I've drawn Willie Lott's cottage and I'm now going to paint it in watercolour. Now, the first thing I want to do is start with the sky. And I've already mixed, I, there's a, quite a few clouds about today. But keep mind you, this keeps taking the sun in, but still it's, um, it's nice to get shadow as well as sunlight. The sun is on this side. And in fact, what I have done, because the sun does keep going through, and always remember this is a, a good thing to do, I've actually marked in the shadows to show me where they are. As, oh, it goes a bit darker there. It shows me where they are in case when I come to paint them, the sun is in altogether. Always a thing to remember that. Um, in fact, there's one of the lines there I've drawn there for the shadow of this chimney. The brickwork on the side of the chimney, it's a very strange chimney is this, but of course, having seen that the hay wain all my life, almost all my life, it's something that I'm used to, but it's very strange the way this chimney goes down at an angle. Um, just down the side of the, the roof, perhaps a little bit more yellow in that. And then the brickwork runs along here to the top of this wall and through. Now make it light enough because remember we, we're going to get sun, sunlight is on this side and we do want to show that the sun is on it, even if we exaggerate it a bit. Don't worry. Oh, we've got a lot of rushes and grasses and things coming up here. So we'll run them in. Now I'm going to put the windows in. I've mixed I've mixed a reasonably dark coloured paint. I think it could do with being a bit bluer than that. Now I'm not trying to paint every window pane except that it is made. Each window has got different window panes in it. This is about six I think. And so I'm, I know there's six there and I'm painting them down as individuals but they're joining together. And this I don't mind because if I paint them too carefully, then they're going to look out of context with the rest of the building. So in fact, they go from right underneath the eaves. They really are close up there. These trees are important, obviously, because they're, apart from being part of the, part of the scene, they're, they're at the end of the painting and they give a lovely bit of composition to the painting. They, they hold, if you like, the cottage and come up round and it, it stabilises it. Now, I'm doing the trunk first, there's quite a bit of 
green, that's a bit big, that one, isn't it? That bowed out a bit much. Quite a bit of dark in the trunks. Um, and I'm doing this quickly because I then want to put some suggestion of leaves around while it's still wet if that's possible but it's drying reasonably quick I want some green in fact there's behind these there's some trees more in the distance and I just wanted to add that blue to them just to take them back it's only a bit around there but there's just a couple actually that's that has gone a little bit big around the tree, around the house there. So I'm just going to take that out with a tissue, just a little bit. It's just gone a bit too far over. Now, all I can do now on the leaves is just to suggest, I'm going into a big brush now, that I did the trunks with my number six, and now I've gone on to my number 10 just to get more speed and into the painting of the leaves now I want to put the gate in it's it the sun's caught it and it's very bright in fact it's very nice against there so I'll put that in and there's a a fence that runs along here and just just while I've got the color on this gate here is dark in shadow at the moment but I'm putting it you see there's bits of light catching it and there's this fence it comes all the way up here and although it's in shadow and the, as I said the light is catching it I can then paint it darker leaving little flecks of that light color to show where the light was and that in fact goes down a little deeper than that but what we have down below almost the same color they're 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 whiter rather than yellower are all the reeds coming out of the water and there's also green reeds behind them oh there's a pathway that goes through there well, i've got the color on and then We'll get some green for the reeds. Notice how I went over the over that path there and it's all running. I just painted the path in, doesn't matter at all. The water's next. Now I've mixed enough um, and I've mixed plenty of colour because it's going to dry very quickly as I paint it on, on the paper. So I must have enough to be able to finish the whole water in one go. I'm starting over this side with the reflection of these reeds and then into the reflection of the house, that's the dark side. I shall go all the way down there, don't worry about splashes like that. Go all the way down and it starts to go into a point at that stage. Now the important thing, I want to get some blue water here where we're out of reflection and I'm just, I'm doing it very freely and it must be done like this because it gives the movement to the water I put a bit of modelling on the roof. I just felt it needed these sort of single brush strokes here, but I've done them to give the curve and the arch that's in that roof. I just wanted two level ones there, just to give a bit more detail in it and give it a bit more life. Well, I'm happy with that. It looks a bit pretty pretty, but then the subject is pretty pretty. Tell you what, for a bit of fun, let's compare my watercolour sketch with one of Constable's oil sketches of the same subject. Naturally, a watercolour sketch is a completely different feel to an oil sketch. But isn't it amazing how similar the scene looks after 180 years? Almost exactly the same. Those two sketches were done on location, but the Haywain, of course, was done in the studio. 
and I've done one in the studio of Willie Locke's cottage. I painted this on a canvas three foot by two foot and the object was to try and get the sunlight that catches the side of Willie Lott's cottage. Incidentally, this was done on the other side of the river to where I'm sitting now. But that was what I was after and I also decided to do it in acrylic paint, not oil paint. So you get this lovely sunlight coming through and this is what I wanted to achieve. Anyway, what a fantastic day it's been. Sketching where Constable sketched and actually sitting in some of the places where he must have done some of his paintings from. It's been really exciting. And next programme, we're going to do more sketches in Constable Country. I'm looking forward to it. See you next time. And you can join Alwyn on his next trip to Constable Country on Monday afternoon at 1.